Okay, it's time to continue the Shannon Reads Those Book journey with The Diviners by Margaret Lawrence. Woo! Oh my goodness, what a journey that has this has been. Okay, this is the 22nd book that I have read for the Those Books Exploration. It makes the list being number 12 on the 25 classic Canadian novels. It actually, it also won the Governor General Literary Awards for English Language back in 1974, and it is pretty much considered a Canadian classic, and it's just, for Canadian novels, it really is one of those that you have to read. You don't have to read it, nobody has to read anything, but for me, if I was coming up with a list of Canadian books, this is definitely, this would make it before I even finished reading it. <laughs> Oh, what to say about The Diviners? Uh, it's so funny because this one I started so long ago that I, it, when I read it this time around, I decided just to start at the beginning. And um, I will say I actually read it on my Kobo, mostly, from the library. This copy is actually from 1975 and is way too dusty for me to read, but I adore this cover. I love the fonts that they used to use in the 70s and, and early 80s for a lot of books and... Yeah, Canadian bestseller. Canadian bestseller. So, yeah, it's really one of those. Anyway, um, this is actually a really, maybe this is better to use this as opposed to trying to come up with a description. Rich, powerful, fascinating, the novel of an independent woman and her urgent need for love. Yeah, I would really say that that's what it's about because I have such a hard time articulating often what Canadian books are about. And this one follows Morag, who is... Uh, uh, a woman and it's also it's often set she reflects back a lot on her life and she sort of tells sort of the story of her life in different um um you know montages in a little way she actually calls some movie movie book memories or movie memories and oh, it's, so, God, it's so hard to what did she say oh of course now i can't find one Memory Bank movie. Leaves on trees can be seen by some. The language in this book is so beautiful. How it is written is, is to me, is extraordinary. How the insight, the moments, the how the brain works and how people think, or for me, it feels, it reminds me a lot of how I think how one thing can lead to another associative memory either, you know, reminds you of something that used to happen, or you look to the future of what could happen, you know, in this moment, is it going to turn this way? Is it going to turn that way? For me, it has a lot of that in it. And I don't find that in a lot of fiction. I feel like, you know, it feels a little, it can feel a little more dissociative. You're like watching the story as opposed to feeling the story and how it develops. And there is a real, for me, one of the challenges, one of the challenges with this one is there is a real sense of, of, loneliness often with her character and hardship, although she is very intelligent and, um, you know, her, her circumstances just isn't that great and prospects aren't, aren't horrible, but not, again, not that great. And this sort of finding a place in the world at the time when, you know, the options for women weren't, weren't awesome. Like this was, you know, it's written in the seventies. I think it's set in the 60s i'm trying to remember maybe it's earlier maybe her when she's growing up it's more like the 50s so sorry I, yeah 40s young when in the 40s growing up more in the 50s i think that feels about right but her character i loved her character the struggles that she goes through the the challenges that she faces the brave decisions that she makes the mistakes that she makes. This is one of those books that really feels like it's just about life. When I, that's when I keep on coming back to when I think about this one is that it's just about life. Things that happen that are random, things that happen that are purposeful, you know, bad choices. That's one of the things I think that makes it feel so realistic is there's, there's bad choices and there's, you know, challenging, horrible things that happen, but it's not over the top. Like, it's just like, yeah, that could happen. That could happen to her, to someone else. You can think that. It might not be the nicest, best, bravest, wonderful thing to think, but you can think that. And for me, so there was a really strong connection I felt to sort of understanding the character on a deeper level. And I just really, 
oh, I just really, really loved it. And I think it's actually, it might even be good that I ended up not finishing it when I first started uh, reading it in high school because there is a sense of, you know, a fair amount of life lived and experiences that she goes through that I don't know if I would have appreciated at that time. And now I really can appreciate. So it's weird because I almost, in some ways, I'm like, I don't even have too much to say about this other than I loved it. I think it's beautifully written. It is completely deserving of all the accolades that it receives. And I am really, really thankful that I ended up picking it up. For some reason now it just ended up being the perfect time. I don't even, I don't, well, I've been actually making an active effort to read more Canadian fiction as part of the Those Books journey, but also I've been trying lightly to read one Canadian book a month and it actually is one more like one every other month because it takes you know this took a, a full month and maybe even then some to read because it's really dense like this is like yeah it's over it's 450 pages ish you know and that's thin pages and small writing that's my bookmark you know small writing and um Oh, but it's so worth it. And I even read some of it while I was on the subway, which was just a complete mistake because I just started crying and I just like, <laughs> I feel like such an idiot. I didn't. I was just, you know, it's like, that's how could you not at that moment? There was the emotional resonance of this book is unreal. <laughs> like, it's so beautiful. And, and, and again, I'm so thankful to have read it. So yeah, and there was nothing there was nothing that I didn't like about it other than the fact that my copy happens happens to be dusty, so I mostly read um from a library copy, which is totally fine. Um but there was nothing about it that I didn't you know, there might there you know, enjoy, you know, there were challenging moments of it, but they all felt real and honest and true and thoughtful and and just real. So yeah, that's the biggest thing that me for me stuck with me with this one is how grounded in in reality it was even though some of the things may seem maybe only a couple things seem far-fetched. So I found it inspiring, I found it wonderful, I found it heartbreaking, and I adored each and every uh, moment of it. One of the things it is noted for is um, being feminist and I think it's one that you know now we might not think of that as much because she really does you know know her own mind and make her own choices and now that's much more of a reality um and or hopefully just is a reality for women uh and so but being written in the early 70s you know and reflecting back on a character you know who was supposed to be growing up earlier you know you can see that there were some challenges she faced and again for me often that's not necessarily something that uh, challenges she faced I don't know were there challenges she faced I felt for me it was I felt like she I was I, I I loved the decisions that she made so maybe that's more it necessarily wasn't like set up a challenge it was just like life happened and you make decisions and that's how it goes <laughs> so and also, when I was looking it up, apparently this one has repeatedly been banned by school boards and um, is often, uh, you know, has been on a, like challenged over and over again. And I'm a little surprised at that, but apparently uh, groups label it blasphemous and obscene. And I, <laughs> I guess there, I guess there is some. I, <laughs> I don't have any problem with anything uh, I would not consider well blasphemy is yeah that's not an issue for me um and obscene I, I mean I'm not sure if that's maybe just language or for me anything that be, could, could be construed as obscene just felt like could happen or would be what someone would say nothing felt obscene to me and that's I think that's just kind of ridiculous but you know who knows how long uh you know maybe, maybe that's when it came out I, it certainly wasn't required reading when I was in high school although that was the time in which I did read it uh we read lives of girls and women so that was the one sort of Canadian classic uh you know that we read but um, but I think maybe after that I wanted to read more Canadian classics, and I did. I also found out through some research that there was actually a TV adaptation done by the CBC in 1993, um, and I would love to get my hands on that, so I'm going to go uh, rooting and searching and see if that's possible, because it would be really interesting to see that um, and and feel it. I would be very curious tonally what they 
would have gone for because I have such a strong sense of the tone and the pace um, from reading it and it's much more like I don't know there's a sort of slower thoughtful observant uh, nature to it that I wonder how they would capture in a TV series Probably, it was probably a miniseries. Anyway, so there you go. There is The Diviners by Margaret Lawrence. I highly recommend it. Um, and I definitely am going to try and read more of her works, especially The Stone Angel and A Jest of God. Uh, those are the two that popped out at me when I looked at the list. And so, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Have you read it? Did you love it? What did you think about it? And, of course, always looking for more, uh, any recommendations on Canadian fiction, because uh, definitely living on that these days. All right. Thanks for watching.